Hello, Singapore. Hello. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Okay. Excellent. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be here, um, particularly in Singapore and uh, DevOps, uh, DevOps days here. Um, and this whole DevOps movement is very close to my heart and uh, I'm fully passionate about it. Uh, um, I, I work for Cisco and uh, um, particularly focused on service provider business. Um, and we're looking at um, what's happening in the service provider is one of the major shifts in uh, the industry towards uh, software-defined networking. And at the heart of it is, uh, in fact, leveraging DevOps principles to transform uh, their, their business and, and the models. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So before that, a uh, little bit about my background. And I actually started my career at Cisco many years ago. Um, I was the network guy. I helped uh, multiple customers, predominantly in the service provider space, uh, help them build the large-scale IP networks. Um, and then um, I, I became a data center guy. Um, and there, I helped a number of customers, um, both uh, enterprise and service providers. Uh, in between, I left uh, to do a SaaS startup in the Web 2.0 space. Um, uh, and uh, my business was entirely based on Amazon, and we had huge growth. At the time, we didn't realize we were doing DevOps, but that's what uh, uh, was our mantra. Then I rejoined Cisco in the cloud business ever since I've been around the um, cloud and uh, transformations, particularly helping service provider customers uh, you know, basically adopt cloud and what it means for them. Uh, so overall, you know, I've been with service providers. I know this business um, very well. It is an exciting time um, now to be part of uh, this industry. I, in fact, I didn't exactly plan my career this way. It's a random set of uh, events which happen to be uh, now uh, making sense um, once I look back. What's happening in the service provider space is uh, the whole network is getting virtualized. You know, think about these networks are um, you know, appliances, um, uh, speeds and feeds. Uh, they're getting uh, virtualized and they're running uh, within the data. They're basically collapsing into the data, data center and they're running very much like your cloud applications uh, with the same operations like the DevOps style. So that's what is software-defined networking and cloud. Uh, my focus within Cisco has been around how do we adopt um, these DevOps, what should be our uh, strategy around it, portfolio, and, um, and my work with um, global service providers who are initially going through this uh, uh, DevOps moment. Uh, it's, it is uh, very early days in this space and in this industry, so <coughs> I, I'm here to share some of the you know, uh, things which we are learning uh, in the market. I, I, I happen to be a curious guy, as you probably can already tell. I, uh, I get bored with things uh, pretty fast and then I uh, end up doing different things. Eventually, it hopefully makes sense. Uh, I, right now, my, where my mind has been, and, and uh, I'm passionately um, looking at automation and how it can help industries. And one of the things which uh, um, I was looking at was the all the airplanes um, uh, cockpit has evolved over time, and um, uh, one of the jokes in the industry um, at that time was uh, that planes would be uh, flown by um, because of the automation would be flown by a a, a person and a dog, uh, and the, the job of the person is to feed the dog, and the job of the dog is to bite him if he touches anything. So that's uh, kind of. Uh, uh, Obviously, we didn't get there, but it is pretty close. If you look at what uh, the airline um, manufacturers have done with, with the automations um, in terms of um, um, you know, uh, autopilot and that kind of stuff, um, uh, it's uh, pretty fascinating. And, and the benefits are um, uh, more safety, reliability, and uh, efficiencies they gain uh, with its fuel savings, etc. But it is uh, um, obviously I'm not going to be talking about that uh, space, but uh, what strikes me was um, the amount of similarities <coughs> between how that industry has evolved and, uh, um, yeah, and what we have with DevOps, um, it's pretty fascinating. And it also has a very direct correlation to a service provider business, which has the, takes pride in carrier class. You know, the networks obviously cannot go down and has high reliability, safety um, requirements. So that's what uh, I found is fascinating. 
Now let me transition to talk about the industry I know well and I've been um, part of it for many years now. Um, service provider industries in many ways, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of slow moving uh, and there are a number of challenges. The top four, and this is universally felt um, um, across the board, whether you are a uh, wireline provider, um, like a cable operator or a mobile operator, the uh, traffic growth is phenomenal. You know, it's actually exponential. The last five years, the internet traffic, the IP traffic, has grown five times. And it is projected to grow 10x at the minimum in the next five years. And uh, none of these service providers are, are um, kind of ready for this kind of uh, um, exponential growth. And what you see here is uh, the average hour uh, and the busy hour. Busy hour spikes up more than the average hour. And this is predominantly driven by video traffic. On, uh, folks like us who are going uh, in YouTube, Netflix, and it does, it does have a prime time concept. And um, so traditionally, the service provider networks are very static in nature. So meaning they, uh, they always predict for the busy hour, and then they overbuild the infrastructure. Uh, but what cloud and uh, this uh, software defined brings to them is uh, ability to you know, dynamically scale um, their needs. And uh, uh, not, uh, you know, today, they uh, uh, throw the box and the physical hardware and people at the problem. Which, uh, which actually doesn't scale well. Um, so they know they have to change. The other uh, a big uh, threat they have is uh, you know, things like over the top, and the folks coming in and eating their direct revenue. The classic example is uh, WhatsApp. You know, my, my wife has been uh, sending me text messages on WhatsApp, and I've, I hardly use any um, text from the telcos anymore. So that's uh, kind of a scary time for them to kind of um, you know, um, compete with these over-the-top players who doesn't have the legacy. Um, and they're always very slow moving. It's, it's partly the legacy culture and uh, the victims of their own success. Um, it's classic silo back offices. One team doesn't talk to the other team. It's a you know, large organization. I think that is um, uh, it's about to change. Uh, they, anything, uh, any service they have to bring to the market takes minimum nine or more in some cases nine months uh, plus, which is not going to be uh, effective for them. And uh, the complexity, amount of complexity they have in, in their networks is protocols, uh, different protocols, different types of vendors, uh, different CLIs. I mean, majority of this industry is very still manually provisioned, manually maintained, uh, very uh, uh, human uh, and uh, you know, the many manual tasks. Uh, so. The, the, the complexity has to drastically reduce that. They know they have to simplify. So the number of uh, net net, you know, it's they're right for some kind of a big transformation and change. And I think now is uh, uh, with the cloud models, uh, it, it is um, an exciting time to be part of this um, industry. In many ways, uh, they've gone through. I've been part of two inflections, but they've, uh, if you look at. Um, what, how the service providers have evolved over time. In simplistic terms, they, uh, when uh, the data and voice, that, that was their, uh, I mean, voice and video was the um, you know, starting point. At the time, um, you know, they, they were running two sub parallel infrastructures, maybe you know, all the way into the homes and uh, businesses, um, you know, two set of uh, cables, they'll drop you different CPEs. And they've gone through that uh, first wave where uh, basically you know it can come through you know one cable and then we'll take care of it in the back end by virtualizing stuff. So they've been virtualizing along the way, and, uh, and you know back in 2000, I think with the internet boom, uh, things have drastically changed for them, where it was predominantly voice and video based uh, became data centric networks. You know, the majority of the traffic today is um, is video and coming from the mobile side of the house and. So things have drastically changed. What that also meant was the value was shifting up. The folks like Sky, WhatsApp, and all these uh, folks are eating into their pie. So they had to invent themselves. For them, the next biggest opportunity and then the biggest influence, I mean, inflection point is around cloud and uh, virtualization. Uh, and uh, this time it is completely software. I mean, it's unlike what the industry has seen. Um, in um, many years. So they have to become effectively like the Googles of the world, the Facebooks of the world have um, 
DevOps style operations, um, and uh, it, it, and it's uh, basically running a software operation. They have to pivot into that software model. At the heart of it is uh, the industry calls as still very early days, but you know there's some um, real good uh, industry momentum behind it. Uh, the th three technologies which uh, are driving this network function virtualization. In simple terms, what that is is a fiber a router or you know firewall, which was an appliance um, that gets virtualized uh, as a software image. It can run in the cloud, and uh, but uh, by definition, it, it gives some efficiencies, um, as you can imagine, it runs like a software application. Um, in the networking space, not everything can be virtualized, so there's still speeds and feeds. Uh, it could be core boxes. Uh, those boxes are becoming more programmable. Today, the more CLI driven, somebody goes and does, it's like an uh, assembly language type of uh, environment. So they're getting virtualized uh, from a programmatic standpoint, and there's a lot of data you can, the telemetry which comes out of it. And that's the SDN uh, moment, you know, momentum where the controllers um, is the abstraction layer where you can write um, software code on top yeah, to do a lot of interesting things. And the cloud is the de facto hosting platform. It's a combination of these three allows them to virtualize uh, networks like never before and launch services. Uh, uh, what this, this also means is what the methods they've been, you know, for the last hundred years they've been using as a playbook for service provider operations is just about to change. And the answer is in, is in DevOps. You know. Majority of them know this, um, and um, they know the transformation can be hard. But uh, there, there are some real good uh, initial um, you know, use cases or the, the customers adopting it, um, which I'm going to talk about. Here's the example, I think one of the classic examples in AT&T, uh, uh, major service providers in the US, has uh, recognized this uh, and start start to go through this transformation journey. Uh, what you see is, is actually uh, their initiative called uh, Domain <coughs> 2.0, which, uh, which is a pivot into the software SDN model, um, as I talked about. Um, so if you look at on the left, it's a classic waterfall type of approach to building. Why does it take 18 months or nine months to launch a service? So they basically, you know, Vendors like us, uh, we give them, um, you know, hardware or software and things like that. They put together they, in their labs. They do a lot of testing because the industry requires, uh, you know, high reliability, availability, reliability, and, and they're known for that. Uh, and also as regulations, so that's why they go through a lot of um, certification testing. But it's a classic waterfall approach. And by the time they launch it, um, it's kind of. Um, uh, 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 it, it worked well and in, in, when the barriers were, were high for them, uh, meaning you know it's not easy for anybody to enter their space. So um, uh, and they, you know, they built the system for a really long time. But that's not going to be um, true anymore in the cloud world where um, anybody like WhatsApp or Skype is able to launch and take their revenue. So the uh, moment, uh, the shift which is happening is, you know, like I said, the. Uh, um, it has very much like the enterprise application style um, hosted on the cloud. Um, now they also need DevOps. Not only they need, uh, the, you know, the, the, the challenge with, um, as uh, Trent was pointing out earlier in the presentation today, uh, it is a cultural shift more than adopting the tools and the principles out there. I think that's the easy part. It's, uh, it's recognizing uh, and knowing what needs to be changed uh, from a going from a siloed model to in, into a DevOps model. That's what we see uh, is the biggest uh, uh, challenge. First, cultures, you know, second, using the heavy automation and tools. Uh, and third, the skill set, uh, majority of their engineers, the network guys are not um, really the programmers, and the programmers don't really understand networks, so that creates a problem. So some of the folks like at and have recognized it, and they have, uh, they have uh, a plan to do the skill pivot uh, into the software by, you know, Offering training courses and things like that. So it's a slow process. It is. Uh, I think it's going to happen in the next five to seven years. Uh, slowly, most of the networks uh, will become um, software and defined. And uh, with that, um, DevOps is the front and center for them to make this transformation. Let me show you a quick use case of. Uh, you know, and this is a real life 
uh, use case. Uh, part of my job is also to work with um, global service providers, uh, at least the emerging ones. So I get to see this firsthand. And uh, so this is a um, service which we've launched in Europe and uh, along with our part service provider partners and in Australia as well. It's called Business VPN Services. And what this is, is uh, you know, um, think about it from a catalog perspective. Service provider offer um, is, uh, uh, is offering a VPN uh, is, you know, type of a service which is managed um, uh, type of a service. And uh, their end customers are small and medium businesses or uh, small, you know, predominantly that's their target. Uh, in this case, the end customer uh, end customers would go into a kind of self-service portal, portal they get you know, a couple of options. I want, you know, if I'm a, um, you know, I might pick an advanced, um, uh, you know, I would like a virtual router, firewall, and IPS, um, high security requirements. So I might pick that. And uh, earlier, this was all done, you know, you, they do these kind of services today. And this is all done manually. You know, somebody has to go on site. Um, configure the router, and we have to, uh, the whole networking stuff, cable it together. And uh, so it, it takes a, a lot of cost and, and also the time which is required. So in this case uh, of a cloud uh, virtualization, the, uh, the behavior is somebody would go in and uh, download the virtual CP, and uh, they would you know, basically plug it into their MPLS or internet network, and that auto, you know, automatically the system gets loads the configuration, it's all full automation. And uh, in the back end, it spins up. Um, so for example, a firewall router, this is called a service chain. You know, I don't want to bore you with the telco concepts. But the, the entire service chain gets instantiated on the cloud um, dynamically. And, um, and the magic happens uh, for the end user to use the service. Uh, and when they no longer need it, obviously you can turn it off and the resources get uh, reused into something else. So this type of, uh, this is very disruptive in nature. And for them, what this means is a uh, high degree of uh, efficiency and uh, kind of, um, uh, they can launch services much faster. It's, I mean, it is shrink, shrinking down to uh, weeks, literally weeks. Uh, and it's a big, uh, big win for them from going from nine months uh, cycles to this type of an environment. Uh, so this is going live. Uh, interestingly, um, uh, we're seeing some good uh, adoption in the market. But in the back end, what does it take to run this kind of operations? You know, traditionally, uh, and this is, this is where the struggle is. You know, the reality on the ground is uh, a lot of these providers are not ready for DevOps-style operations. It is fundamentally different than what um, you know, they've been used to for the last year, many years. So you can imagine, I think it's, again, uh, it's, a lot of it is culture, uh, you know, get, getting the right set of uh, folks to, um, it's basically software. You have run it as a software shop. What you see here is um, um, you can't be throwing people at, at the problem uh, for, uh, to run this kind of environment. So it, well, it's, uh, I already talked about you want to launch a new service, or if they're, they're many changes which happen because of dynamic software and one they could be an updated software um, or uh, whatever the human workflow uh, there was an error or, or a, a, um, a fault of some sorts the system is able to now you can because of the nature of um, software uh, defined you can auto remediate um, and take actions uh, without ever using as a, a human being and it very much, you know, as you probably saw in previous presentations, uh, it, it has, um, you know, you have concept of tool chain where um, you know, like the get, you know, everything is stored, including all the images, the, um, the, uh, uh, the models which are, the software models which are defined um, in, a, in a highly standardized um, um, source specification like GitHub repository. And uh, there's a whole different set of, uh, Pretty much one of the web guys have been using, but with slight variations on the tool front. Um, uh, and uh, the other part is to have um, high predictability. Um, it, uh, earlier, these testing cycles uh, were very manual in nature, so that changes into the automated uh, testing. And uh, these environments are, are also 
um, they are identical in nature so that your degree of confidence in putting in production um, goes high. Just to give you an example, the, the changes on the network today uh, do not, I mean, you, you hardly make, you know, um, in a quarter, couple of changes, uh, because it is uh, these production networks, you don't touch production networks. It has, as you can imagine, it has um, a, a big wider impact than changing an application, which, uh, because if your network is down, basically everything is down. So there, the mindset so far, the methods today they use uh, is a very locked down. And also there's a lot of regulations and who can touch the system how frequently they can make changes. But that's all is about to change with the um, kind of DevOps style operations. But again, a lot of it is mindset, uh, but, you know, the, and also the necessary tooling which is required uh, to make these uh, a, a reality. I'm going to switch a little bit. So while this industry is going through it's a fascinating time uh, uh, in, uh, to be a part of uh, such a big change, particularly for me. Um, also, I think there are some new requirements. We were able to adopt, you know, the, uh, the, this industry will never have the same uh, type of velocity and the change frequency like, uh, uh, like the web guys. You know, Amazon does changes um, literally, you know, 11.8 seconds uh, can be they do changes uh, that rapidly. I don't think this will be the case here. What will be interesting for them is if they have a security vulnerability or you know, uh, something of that, which they, having that scale, uh, and because they, they've got hundreds of thousands of nodes, they need to manage, uh, and having a capability uh, of updating router switches or whatever it is, um, is very interesting for, for this uh, industry, but at the same time, it is that, you know, uh, I want to be agile, I want to sure, launch a lot of things, but you know, the stability is of utmost importance, and I think, which is why I was kind of reading up on the airline models, but I think it is, it's going to be an interesting dance. A lot of it is uh, related to uh, mindset uh, and also the, the tools which uh, uh, we'll find out. Uh, the other uh, biggest concern is the hybrid nature. You know, they can't get away from having physical uh, kind of networks and, um, and and virtual. So these are two separate skills and 180 degrees apart. And uh, managing these um, hybrid environments is, is going to pose some challenges, uh, any challenges for this industry. And I already talked about the network programmer bottleneck. I think uh, the you know, uh, severe shortage in terms of the skill uh, for, the, for the folks who, uh, who have the networking knowledge and uh, and the programming language, they have to come together from some sorts. Um, I think there'll be a high demand for, um, frankly, when this industry starts to um, uh, take a big rise. Uh, and the back office systems, uh, traditionally, they've not made it easy on themselves. We've got um, lots of each, you know, if you, have, if you have a service, then there is a management system on top, and there's a billing assurance system. Each, they're all siloed environments, so that has to be cleaned up. Any launching new service, that's the biggest bottleneck. You have to have all these integrations which are point to point, and they take forever to uh, get that right. So it is, it's about to change uh, for, the, for this industry, but it's gonna be, um, it's gonna take its own time and path, uh, unlike everything else. Uh, what is needed, I think the uh, skills which are very much like the DevOps style um, uh, skill set, uh, but with the, t with the networking knowledge um, uh, around it and um, operations of networks from the past uh, would help. So that, um, folks like at and have, uh, and others have realized that the skill doesn't really exist, I and mean, even it's in high demand. So they've started uh, you know, skill pivot programs to start you know, uh, creating that supply, um, and again, think uh, uh, would be in high demand in some time. And the process, here's where we've, uh, we've been, uh, I think the cultural changes in the back office silos um, uh, are a serious, serious issue in terms of um, a number of handoffs and anything, any, anything to do with network, um, they'll have a change ticket, somebody goes and configures uh, a portion of the network, passes it on to someone, it, it does, 
um, it, you know, it's a big change from how they're doing today. Um, and so I, implementing that would be a, 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 of a huge benefit. There were some, I think there are some services like transformation services. Um, we partnered with a company in the U.S. to bring this to some of our customers. Uh, um, and these guys you know, go in, look at the process, uh, figure out where the value, you know, handoffs are, and you know where they can use automation, that kind of stuff. Uh, tool set. Um, well, I think a lot of the existing uh, DevOps tools do apply. Uh, there are some um, gaps in, in the industry in terms of, uh, especially related to the networking and the troubleshooting aspects. Um, majority of the industry is fo focused on how do I provision these uh, uh, and program these, but not necessarily focused on uh, uh, what happens if, what can I do if something goes wrong uh, in, in that environment? How do I troubleshoot? Uh, how do I test? Uh, uh, from uh, the compute side is well understood, I think, uh, because of the early DevOps moment from the, uh, which came from uh, the Googles and the Facebooks side of the house. But on the networking side, uh, those tools are missing, and I think the industry was started out. Uh, last but not the least, I think the standards are still emerging. There's a couple of forums. Uh, the, the, I talked about the concept of service chain and how these um, um, network functions are stitched together. And that's uh, kind of uh, the Yang models. Uh, well, they're, they're still emerging. In fact, we just, um, Cisco has acquired a company called TLF um, around this, which has, um, yeah, which exactly does that uh, level of abstraction for uh, networks. Now, in my early customers, uh, the, the ones which uh, we are engaged with, the large ones, uh, uh, where do we start? You know, this is not, uh, it's not a, as much as uh, it is a technology-led discussion in, you know, how do I do this? There's a lot of interest, proof of concepts, understanding what is the, what is the network function virtualization, how does it, what can I take to market? Um, but uh, I think the, the quickly realizing it, it is a big cultural shift, one that they're not used to, and uh, one they're not, frankly, not prepared to do uh, in, in the software side. So it starts small, but uh, you know, it, it pretty much starts with basics. You know, what is DevOps? How do you, uh, you know, how do you, uh, it's basically awareness education across, and also looking at a particular service, not try not to boil the ocean, um, uh, and you know they won't be succeeding. You know, these uh, carriers have legacy cultures and people, and with that um, comes uh, a lot of interesting things. So they they'll have to start small, evaluate a process um, and a service, um, and uh, demonstrate continuously improve on it. Demonstrate how they can uh, leverage automation or you know metrics. Uh, what is uh, what's required in in that and uh, identify. Uh, improvements to continuously make make the change. Again, this is going to be a multi-year journey, uh, whichever way we look at it, uh, and um, going from physical to virtual side of the house. But if if they do, I think it is a it's a fascinating time, um, particularly around um, you know, this, all the sensors coming in, the IoT use cases, um, and the, the efficiencies um, they can gain by being nimble. And also, I, I think uh, it will clean up uh, their entire back office, which for many years they have known it was a big problem. Uh, I think this becomes the forcing function. And uh, uh, eventually, I have no doubt in my mind, they will turn into DevOps uh, style operations uh, with, the, uh, with the network. And I think it will be, it will benefit the whole uh, you know, industry at large uh, with with, what, with what's happening around the uh, uh, Internet of Things. Thank you very much. That, that, was, that was it from my end.